is Dr. Uli Chetapali, who, uh, when he's not uh, an emergency room physician or researcher or writing, he's actually uh, also CEO of Sirica Therapeutics, which he's going to tell us uh, about today. It's a really interesting concept here that's probably unlike anything we've seen so far. So I'll leave it to Dr. Chetapali to, to tell us about what he's doing. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, can I share my screen? Great. Okay. Let's see, let's go back to the top. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the Brain Foundation and thank you, Pramila, for giving me an opportunity to present Sirica Therapeutics. And I wanted to uh, let you uh, let your audience know that uh, this is the first time we are actually introducing this concept and this company. So this is the launch of Circa Therapeutics in, in a way. Now, I was looking at the date and I was thinking one, two, one, two, two, zero, two, one. Is that a code for something, some pattern? Uh, we'll find out. But it's a great date uh, because today I'm going to talk about Circa Therapeutics. Let me put it on. Okay. I wanted to tell you about uh, our daughter. Her name is Siri. She has autism. She was diagnosed when she was three years old. And like everybody else, you know, we had to struggle to find what exactly needs to be done. You know, one of the biggest things out there at that time was early, but it was ABA therapy. And, you know, we followed the doctor's instructions and it did help. Although it was very painful, you know, 20 to 30 hours is uh, a lot of uh, struggle, but we know that she has made some progress uh, with that therapy. But later on, when she was done with uh, the therapy, she was done with school, although she had uh, a very difficult time during schooling, uh, including uh, difficult behaviors, uh, aggressiveness, and um, injurious behaviors. So right after she graduated from school, when she turned 22, we did not have anything else to fall back on. You know, the day programs were really bad and it did not fit her uh, her picture and, and it did not fit her needs. So one of the things we started doing was, you know, doing working with her ourselves, my wife and I. What we noticed is that when we engage her, when we encourage her, when we challenge her, and when it is a gratifying solution for her, she works great. In fact, she makes big progress. She has now a business of her own running designsbyseri.com. She makes jewelry, she makes um, crafts, she does all these things. And people ask her, ask us, how did you do this? How, how did that happen? And so when I start back thinking about this, you know, these are the experiences or the characteristics of these experiences that we have used that helped her improve her behavior, her mood, and her motivation. So I thought, can we put this into a device? And that search um, has now culminated in Sirica Therapeutics. The purpose is to develop and commercialize a technologically advanced, clinically proven, scalable therapeutic system for autism that is fun for the user. The fun is an important factor here. By the way, we are in Silicon Valley, and why not? The problem is the current treatments involve manual one-on-one -on -one interventions. You know, it takes a long time. You know, 20 to 30 to 40 hours a week. That's a long time. And the treatment is variable depending, you know, it is operator dependent or therapist dependent. 
And most importantly, it is not fun because, you know, we'd have to bribe the kids or, you know, we have to bring them back when they're screaming and complaining. So what are the components of this kind of a system? So we put together three components that work together to form the system. You know, first one is virtual reality. And you have seen other places where they've used this. It's creating that deeply immersive environments that are stimulating and challenging. And then we added advanced robotics. Now the robotics part is not just a robot that comes and talks with you. It's the whole device is a robot that you sit on and operate. So it has sensors and it can control the movements. It can add and, and add more inertia to the machine and to different parts of the, uh, of the machine. The third piece is where we collect data, thousands of data points of, from each session. And then imagine having multiple machines and we are collecting this data and using that data, applying machine learning algorithms to make the therapy more effective and the outcomes better. I wanted to show you the video. I can describe the machine, but it's better to see it yourself. This is Siri on the machine. What she is doing is she's writing this, as, as you can see, she is seeing this in her virtual reality goggles. And so she's technically riding a vehicle. There she hit a rock. So she's trying to get out. And this is the first time she's writing it. She has never written this before and she's able to manipulate it. And after it was done, when I asked her, do you want to write some more? She said, yes. So this is the second session that she's writing on. As you can see, the machine itself is moving. So she can feel the bumps in the road and the rocks that she is hitting. Yes. So that is an interesting experience because we were developing this actually for stroke, but we had an idea that this could potentially be, this machine could potentially be used for autism and many other similar neurological conditions where you need to put people in, a, in, a, in an environment where there is urgency, and also there is, it is a task oriented therapy. And the idea behind this is that this will stimulate neuroplasticity. And I don't wanna talk more into the science of it, but I will, I will, I will have that uh, at another talk. So what we have done is it took a, a few years for us to develop this prototype. On, on, you know, it took about four years to actually fine tune this system so that the software, the hardware, the robotics, all these pieces work together and can give us enough data. So what's happening right now is that we are taking this as a separate company. Sirica is going to be purely focused on autism. Torque 3 is the original company and that will continue. And I've been their chief medical officer for the last two years. Now you must be thinking, you know, what are the, what, what, where is the competition here? Well, I kind of did a Google search trying to find competitors in the robotic space, the virtual reality space, the machine learning space. And there has been some progress. For example, you know, Yale University researchers are trying to do job training user, using a robot, but this is a robot that talks to you and is more like a teacher. I've looked at Florio, which is a VR learning system. And this is where you put on your VR goggles and your, um, it walks you through several lessons. 
And same thing here, adaptive technology, they are doing, they have a driving simulator where you put on your VR goggles and you can drive. But it is not the same as what we are trying to do, where we are trying to combine all three. Cognoa, some of you may know, they have a digital diagnosis and treatment system using videos and iPhone. Achille is very interesting because they have used a video game to treat ADHD and it was approved uh, by the FDA. So this is just a video game that you hold and play. Now, what if you combine all these three different mechanisms and put it together in one piece? And that's what Sirica Therapeutics is trying to do. Now, we all know the economics, right? You know, there have been some great speakers and there is this urgency that, you know, autism is growing. It used to be one in 54 and now it is one in 44 births, just two years ago. Uh, FDA has a very favorable regulation process now for this disease because, because of the urgency. And right now we have coverage um, in 50 states for, for therapy. Now the main therapy is the behavior uh, and the speech and OT where we will need 60,000 therapists to be able to manage the demand right now. And the demand keeps growing. But right now we have only 30,000 therapists that are working. So we need 30 more. So there is such a high demand. And of course, the market size is going to grow. By 2025, it'll be 461 billion. So I put together a team, uh, myself. Uh, my name is Yuli Cherepali. Uh, I am a physician um, by training. I practiced emergency medicine at Kaiser. I have a background in epidemiology, population health, a master's from UCLA. Uh, most of my career, I was at Kaiser. I developed systems, technologies, and platforms, which are now working in 21 hospitals, uh, emergency departments. I worked at uh, Anthem AI designing AI systems. I worked at TORC3 being their chief medical officer. And also I created a community of physician innovators at innovatormd.com. Now we are, I am taking on this bull by the horns because this is very personal to me uh, because of my daughter. Uh, I have uh, Kristen Jacobson, an amazing person. She and a few other parents got together several years ago and changed the law uh, they went to the Senate in Sacramento and wrote these laws that hopefully one day will change the coverage for autism. And they were successful after four years of working diligently on it. She also worked uh, at Autism Speaks, McKinsey, and she has an MBA from Stanford. Hiran Patel, you know, he's a biomedical engineer. He has worked from Rutgers, has worked at J&J, Zimmer, Biomed, and Cook Medical. And Tim Lacey, he's our science uh, guru. He has uh, experience in, at Walter Reed. He's a psychiatrist by training and also a U.S. Air Force veteran uh, from um, GW University, George Washington. And he's the chief science officer at TORC3. He is helping us design the system for autism. And one thing I didn't tell you is that three of these team members have kids with autism. That is myself, Kristen, and Tim. I can tell you about projections, the financial projections, but it would be very unrealistic. So I'll let somebody else talk about it. Some of you in Silicon Valley may recognize this person, but I'll play the video for you. Oh, it skipped. Enormously lucky. 
Sid and I have been as parents. Um, the kids have been through, you know, a lot. Uh, but we had the ability, we had the means, um, and we had uh, the will and the luck to go out and find um, the AP and folks who are just technically and in every way just the best in the business. Um, and there aren't that many people uh, in the world who have access to this kind of care or, or maybe are even aware of it. Um, and when you look at, you know, this, the, the best in the business, this is, autism is turning out to be big business. So this is where I go from the parent version of the talk to the business version of the talk. Um, so if you look at this stock, I'm actually, I uh, ran a publicly traded company, Expedia, for 16 years. This is a, and we're rumored to go public, the new company that, that uh, I'm running. This is a chart of um, the stock market over 40 years. Uh, and the blue chart is the Dow Jones index. The red chart is Coca-Cola, one of the best performing stocks in the market. Um, and then there's a new entrant, which is autism diagnoses. Uh, beats them all. Right. So if you look at if you look at autism diagnoses as a growth industry, this is the ultimate growth industry. It's extraordinary how fast um, the rate of diagnoses has increased over the past 40 years. Uh, and Ron and I were talking about it. You know, is it is it that the definition, the spectrum definition has expanded? Um, is it now that there's just much more awareness? Uh, of the spectrum, so there's more awareness, there's more testing, et cetera, um, it's probably a combination of all of those, right? But the fact is that this business, if you want to look at it, has gone from being a small cottage industry to being big business to being industrialized to some extent. You know, we're going from a cottage industry to the Ford Model T, uh, that has been mass produced to the Prius. Okay, so this is the ask. What we are doing is we are raising our seed round, a $2 million seed round. And we are looking for clinical partners to host and run our pilots. We, have, we will have three machines later in next year. And uh, we need to run some testing and pilots. And we need research partners to be able to design and conduct studies. Thank you very much. I will stop there. And if there are any questions, I'll take it. Sure, thank, thank you, you Julie. Um, so we have one question here, and then uh, we'll have to move on. Uh, so uh, the question is one of the challenges with any virtual reality application for autism is that a reasonably large subset in autism has sensor, sensory sensitivity and cannot wear the standard headset for a meaningful period of time. Have you explored of any of the headsets that may be easier to use for this segment? Not yet, but uh, that is a challenge, definitely. So we have to figure out how do you ease them into the headset? into a headset. You know, first maybe we, you know, we do have large screen uh, areas where the child is or adult is looking at the screen while they're writing this machine. You could do that. And as they get interested, as they get engaged, slowly introduce them to the headset. Now, the other factor is that you can control the full environment inside the game. So you can make it as blank or as less distracting as possible or as less disturbing as possible. Is it the sound? Is it the colors? Is it the, the, the way it is designed? So we can slowly introduce them into an environment which is therapeutic. So that's, that's what we are planning to do. Great, thank you. And, and there are a couple of other questions in the Q&A. Um, uh, that um, in the interest of time, we should just move on and maybe you could answer those questions directly in the Q&A. That would be great. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure. 
Yes, let me uh, take over here and introduce uh, Dr. Campbell. Um, he's CEO of Ex Axial Biotherapeutics, Stuart Campbell is Senior Vice President of R&D at Axial Therapeutics, and he brings 25 years of drug discovery and development experience to Axial. He has built and led R&D teams in early stage research through, a, through to advanced clinical development in small startups to mid-sized companies. Um, he